Hello folks, make another video here and see, sweating again, we're both sweating. We are not happy campers right now. So the other day we started on the basement. <coughs> Pretty much the basement is but isn't taken care of. We got everything moved. Once we get everything down there, I'm going to go back down and do what I can to kind of organize and make it look better. We're not happy. Um, he said, why don't you put your food in the basement? What? Who puts their food in the basement of an apartment building where just anybody can go take it? And then we don't want it to spoil... I don't want to make a, a negative video. I apologize. But it's hot, it's humid, although thankfully it's trying to rain. Trying to rain. And it's cooling things down. So that's good. Um, we are both out of energy and we are both sweating. And. Uh, This has been um, something else. We uh, got started on the kitchen today. This is what we really need to do. But then there's also the matter of where to put things. We need to get a large garbage can, square rectangular for aluminum cans. Another one for plastic bottles, because you can get money back on plastic bottles. And then we need a larger, like a tall kitchen garbage can instead of the little one we, we're using because that one we have to empty like every day, sometimes more than once a day. We need a bigger place. That's all there is to it. This was never meant to be permanent, nor was it intended to be long term. But, see, we thought, that we, since it's a month to month, supposedly a month to month, we could just find another place and move out. But Keen Housing says it's a one-year lease, so we have to stick with the one-year lease, so we can't move till what, November? So we can't move till November. Um... frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, I don't think it's good for books to be in the basement. I think it's worse for the food to be in the basement. Especially if things not in tin cans. Yeah, because I, I saw a bat down there once. He just flew back and forth a few times. Uh, I'm more worried about the moisture. Yeah, the moisture. I mean, that's... You know, the other day we needed cornmeal because we made a pizza. And by the way, that was a good pizza crust. That recipe was good. I, I got it off all recipes. I should link it. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of lost my train of thought. But, this is frustrating. The apartment is very small. I'm willing to say maybe even a little smaller. Either it's just a tad bit smaller or a tad bit larger than that one I had in San Antonio. Now, well, this may, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I, I did the square footage on that apartment. I measured it once. And it was not anywhere close to the size that the complex said it was. Nowhere close. But... You know, anyway, if you live in San Antonio and you're looking for a place to live, Santa Fe Place Apartments, do not live there. Please, don't even bother. I mean, when we were down there and we drove down Fredericksburg Road, Carolyn, I pointed it out to Carolyn. And, by the way, uh, Kurt, you're going to call her dumb? You don't do that in front of me. But she noticed something that I had not noticed. So don't dare call her dumb. 
she's smart. She noticed that one of the buildings, the building, one of the two buildings that faces Fredericksburg, was just frankly awful looking. I mean, it's nasty looking. Peeling paint, doors that are even peeling. I mean, not the paint on the doors, but the doors themselves are coming apart. And I don't know, but for whatever reason, I just either didn't take note of it or I was in such desperate need of an apartment after the building I lived in had burned down that I went ahead and lived there. The I, balconies look like they're going to fall off. The wood looks like it's deteriorating, deteriorating badly. And I don't know, did you notice the, the manager's car? No. I didn't see it. He, he drives this, the, I think it's a red, tricked out, ghetto mobile Cadillac. I didn't know that was his when I went to move in there, but um, that should tell you what kind of guy he is. A um, lot of drugs, prostitution. Now, I will say one good thing about that complex. Maintenance. When I lived there, maintenance was fantastic. Uh, oh, well, and they don't help. want anybody to complain. Oh, no, they don't. They don't want people. You complain, you get in trouble. You know, even if it's not your fault, you complain, you get in trouble. You know, uh, I complained about a number of things there, and it kind of came back on me, and it shouldn't do that. Um, and they change the rules on you, and they do not abide by the Americans with Disabil Disabilities Act. Okay, I have tardive dyskinesia, although for some reason I'm doing pretty good right now. Wait till it gets cold again. But um, I asked for a ground floor apartment, and I was given a third floor apartment. I had to walk up that. I fell down I don't know how many times. Not just on the steps, but on the straightaway, the walkway. And uh, a, a friend of mine, a friend that we went and we met, that Carolyn met um, in San Antonio, she came over there and she said, she said something about how ghetto the place looked. The concrete is all stained and cracked and because you know, the, the walkways are, are concrete. They're even upstairs, they're all concreted. You know, it's like a metal frame with concrete in there. And... Um, Look, I'll tell you what, I was uh, born and raised in the third world. I know what the third world is. And that apartment complex is very reminiscent. Actually, there's there are a lot of places in Texas that are very reminiscent of the third world. And that's sad. Uh, the thing is that spreading throughout that the United States... That apartment looks like it came out some, from something out of East St. Louis. So I know what East St. Louis looks like. So, y'all heard that. So, you know, I don't know St. Louis. or East St. Louis. East St. Louis. I mean, I've been to Illinois once in my entire life. You don't want to know what it looks like. So, you know, if you... Uh, it used to be called um, Summer Wind Apartments. Because I lived there some... See, I had moved in there the first time. I think I was 27 or 28 years old when I moved in. And I had my 30th birthday there. It really is a bad place. And the management is very racist. So, you know, and I, anyway, you know, their, their whole attitude is just unprofessional. Uh, the way Curtis, that's the manager now, he's something else. I would say that he, if, if he was more intelligent, I would say he was a sociopath, but he doesn't have the smarts to be a sociopath. But he's very manipulative, and he loves money. He claims to be a Christian, but he loves money. I mean, he worships the stuff. He'll do anything and everything to, to fine you for nothing. Um, you know, but he keeps the Bible on his desk. He also keeps a gun under his desk because he's afraid. Why is he afraid? Because he screwed so many people over. He knows 
Yeah. This is another reason I don't think he's a sociopath. If he was a sociopath, I don't think he would think what he was doing was wrong. But he seems to realize that what he's doing is wrong. Otherwise, why does he keep a gun? Because he knows somebody might come by, or he thinks somebody might come by and confront him. You know, say, hey, bud, stand up and uh, let's talk this out because you're in the wrong. And uh, animal cruelty, oh boy, could they get caught, get in trouble for animal cruelty. Uh, renting to illegal aliens, knowingly renting to drug dealers, knowingly renting to prostitutes. Um, you know, people will, you can smell it. I mean, you can be in your apartment, you can be walking down the street you know, anywhere on the sidewalk, and you smell it. You smell the, the, the marijuana all over the place. Now, I'm for decriminalization, but nonetheless, that doesn't mean I want to live around it. There's a difference, you know. Um, and he doesn't do anything about it. And he gets on to apartmentratings.com, and he goes on with fictitious profiles claiming to be a resident but then he'll claim you know I finally got him I mean I, I said enough and he, he said you know he was who he was and you know uh, the place is roach infested I mean nasty roach infestation I used to buy bug bombs and I would put them in my apartment now I would just fog that place and I would kill tons of them. But, you know what? The next morning, the place was infested again. And eventually, I just gave up. Because I bought the bug bombs. I bought traps. I bought poison for them to eat, you know, bait. Uh, it didn't do anything. And they had uh, somebody come through that was supposed to be putting poison for the roaches. And it wasn't doing any good. So Adult Protective Services told them they had to get legitimate pest control. And they did, at least for a while. So, um, just please don't live there. You deserve better. Even the worst of the worst deserve better than that. Even rats deserve better. Yeah. So, anyway, so I've been talking about the cleaning and organizing. It's not really cleaning. The place is clean. It's organizing. Organizing. And it's health and safety code. According to the landlord. Violations. Never let a cop into your apartment. Always keep the door closed. Go to the window or the door. Say or just don't respond, period. But if they, they want in, say you have a warrant, if they don't have a warrant, yeah, can't come in. Um this is what letting the cop in the house got us. Yeah, and it, and it was a medical issue that was going on, and... I should have went and sat on the doorstep and waited for him. Yeah, but, you know, who thinks of that, especially when the cop has a good reputation? Not anymore. So, anyway, oh, Curtis in San Antonio. You know there are websites with your name People talking about you from California, about the things you've done to people, and I would so love for you to come up here, Curtis. Come up here. If you think I owe you anything, if you think anything, you want to come and just confront me face to face. Come here. Come to me. Don't mess with Carolyn. You mess with Carolyn, you're going to be in even worse trouble. He comes up here. There's going to be a loaded gun waiting for him. Yeah, because if you come up here, we will consider your presence a threat. A threat to our life, a threat to our well-being, a threat to our property. But I don't think you're smart enough to understand that, Curtis. So anyway, that's all I have to say.